Episode 111. My dog seems to like this lady. Except for Rosaria and Isaac, everyone around April walked toward Aaron and Sylvia. Miss Rosaria, Mr. Davidson, please excuse me for a second. I need to go say hi to my cousins. Marianne apologized, then quickly followed behind Esther and the others. Aaron, your grandma and I were just talking about how, if only you were here, and now you are here. What a surprise. I haven't seen you in a while. You're even more handsome than before. Mrs. Flanders just couldn't stop grinning. Aaron was the future successor of YCC Group, and his showing up could mean that he admitted the Flanders family as an important part of YCC. After all, a new chief brings new aides. Caitlin Bennett was looking after the Flanders family for now, but who knew what would happen after Aaron took over the company? While responding carelessly, Aaron looked around and soon found April, who was standing by the swimming pool. She was wearing a pure white dress today. Her body was slim, and her eyes were shining, looking stunningly beautiful. She is so the woman I like. She looks stunning even in a simple dress, unlike Marianne here. My eyes are dazzled by her dress, yet she's not even half as pretty as April. He wondered why April wasn't looking at him, and who the man standing by her side was. As for the lady beside the man, he ignored her. Aaron, where are you looking? Your aunt is talking to you. Speak to her. Esther gave Aaron a softly threatening glance and said, Do you have your eyes on some girl? We have so many beautiful girls at the party tonight, but the one I like the most is Director Skinner's daughter. Look, that girl in the pink dress, Mrs. Flanders said and hurriedly pointed at a girl. Aaron glanced at the girl, then turned back and said, Average. You call that average? Auntie, you need to improve your taste, and I'm not here for a blind date. I don't need anyone to introduce me to any girls. Aaron glanced at Mrs. Flanders. Mrs. Flanders was forbidden to say another word by the impatience in his eyes, but only sneakily pulled Esther's arm. If Aaron married Director Skinner's daughter, the Flanders family would have a stronger footing in the company. Sylvia sensed the strange atmosphere, so she hurriedly held Esther's hands and said, Granny, I'm also here. Please, don't always talk about my brother, making me jealous. He doesn't like those kinds of parties, because you always try to introduce him to girls. All right, all right, I'll stop. But I think you need to talk to your brother. Why did he bring a dog to this occasion? What if the dog bit someone? Hearing their conversation, Aaron became extremely impatient. He grasped the chance to give Richard a light kick. The huge Richard instantly began twisting his body. As Aaron dropped the leash, Richie immediately broke out to the crowd and rushed toward the swimming pool. Many guests were startled by this giant dog. Richard darted directly to April. Seeing the scary-looking dog rushing over, Rosaria panicked, automatically taking two steps backward. However, she didn't notice that she was already at the edge of the swimming pool. Before she knew it, she tripped on her heels and fell backward. Isaac was going to pull her, but instead of that, he found that Richard was pouncing on April, so he reached out an arm to protect the ladder without thinking. As the party turned, chaotic guests were crowding around the pool, watching Rosaria flail about helplessly. Help! I can't swim! The attention was turned to Rosaria's date, Isaac. He was currently entangled in a mess with Richard in fear that the dog would hurt April if he walked away. Finally, one of the guests jumped into the pool and carried Rosaria out of the water as the other guests scrambled to give him a hand. Rosaria was in a sorry state. Her high-heeled pumps had fallen off and she was gurgling water. Her skin had gone pale and she sat slumped, dripping wet. To the delight of some of her nemeses, her blue gown was now translucent and plastered to her body. Her breasts were spilling from the corset and her nipple pasties had fallen too. Every humiliating detail revealed to all the guests. Men were looking at her bosom and behind with lust. April was astonished. She knew that Rosaria was afraid of dogs, but she had underestimated the amount of terror that Richard could elicit. As she looked at Rosaria, she couldn't help but feel gleeful about the turn of events. Justice is best served hot, she thought. She looked at Isaac, who was still wrestling with Richard on the ground. What on earth is he doing? His lady fell into the pool. Come here, Richie. Aaron walked over and called out. Richard detached himself from Isaac and ran to Aaron obediently. Isaac was annoyed, but he had to contain his anger when he saw that Aaron was the owner of the dog. He quietly removed his jacket and wrapped it around Rosaria. Isaac! Rosaria buried her face into his chest and sobbed pitifully. Mr. Davidson, carry Rosaria upstairs to get a change of clothes, Marianne said. Butler, bring my new evening gown upstairs for Miss Rosaria. Isaac carried her silently towards the villa with Marianne following behind them. 
The Flanders family looked awkward and embarrassed. Esther glared at Aaron and said, I told you just now, don't bring the dog if you have to come. Why didn't you hold on to his leash properly? Look at what you've done. How is this my fault? Richie didn't touch her at all. She was scared witless when she saw him and fell into the water herself. I don't understand why anyone would fear Richie. There's nothing to be scared about. He looks like such a friendly dog and he never, ever bites. Aaron bent over and patted the dog. Friendly. Was he describing a Samoyed dog? The guests were almost grinning. April was speechless. Richie resembled a wolf. Aaron was a tad shameless to describe him as a friendly dog. How does he look friendly at all? Esther announced aloud what everyone else was thinking. Naturally, people will be scared of such a big dog. I'll leave then, since Richie is so unwelcome here, Aaron said apologetically and turned to leave. It's okay, just an unfortunate accident. Donald Flanners stopped him. Richie is adorable, and I quite like him. Yeah, Kathy added. I'll get him some bones to chew on later. Thanks, Auntie. I'm sorry for the trouble. Aaron halted and smiled. Richie wagged his tail and barked at April. My dog seems to like this lady. Aaron raised his brows at her and smiled. <sighs> what mediocre taste. She wanted to punch him. Aaron stroked Richie quietly. What an act. She knew that he was there for her, but what he was acting so aloof and nonchalant. What was he trying to pull? Episode 112. April, go apologize to Sister Rosaria later. Esther glanced at her grandson helplessly. She was used to her grandson's strange tastes. However, as April's family background was too unideal, she thought for a moment, then stayed silent. As no one responded to Aaron, Sylvia had no other choice but to play a part in his show. Brother, enough is enough. I think she's pretty. Yeah? Aaron patted Richard on the butt, then Richard wiggled to April, put his four paws on her shoulders, and raised his head to lick her face. Aaron raised his eyebrows. Esther couldn't bear watching this. Tell Richie to stop doing that, she said. That girl is the MC. Don't break her dress. Aaron walked over and slapped Richard's back. Richard howled and put down his four paws, but he still, he wouldn't leave April. April found this both funny and annoying. Aaron was so angry yesterday, but today he came here and ordered Richard to keep an eye on her. Richie rarely likes someone so much. Just play with him for a while. Aaron eyed April in a bland way, saying, Can you please feed him later? Aaron, this young lady is our MC. She'll be on stage later, Mrs. Flanders reminded him. Then she can feed Richie afterward, Aaron nodded. Mrs. Flanders didn't know how to continue. Uncle Sydney, I haven't seen you in a while. Aaron turned and walked to a man who was greeting him. They shook hands, then started chatting. Seeing that, Esther just didn't know what to say. Sylvia, you should look after Richie later when Miss April goes on stage. What happened just now can't happen again, she said to Sylvia. Granny, don't worry. Sylvia nodded while winking at April. April couldn't help but admire Sylvia and her brother for their acting skills. Later, when Ms. Rosaria finishes changing, the party will begin. Mrs. Flanders said to April, then guided Esther and Sylvia to their seats. Well, isn't that... Ryan walked over confusedly. However, before he approached, Richard bared his teeth and threatened him, looking seriously scary. Ryan raised both his hands, not daring to come any closer. April wanted to laugh. She guessed that Aaron and Richard trained at home. Don't worry, this dog knows me, she said. Ryan was a little speechless, feeling that the dog threatened him on purpose. He was surprised to find that April's boyfriend was actually the future successor of the YCC group. No wonder he was so rich and proud. Fifteen minutes later, Marianne escorted Rosaria and Isaac out of the villa. Rosaria had changed into a black dress and put on a new face of delicate makeup. However, all of the guests clearly remembered how she fell into the water just now. Now they just wanted to laugh more at her. Isaac, look! Rosaria spotted the dog beside April, so she angrily tugged on Isaac's clothes. She was so pissed off. She would never forget that earlier. When she fell into the pool, Isaac could have saved her, but chose to protect April instead. What made her even angrier was that the dog now seemed to be happy around April. Stop, Isaac warned Rosaria with a low voice. The dog was just an ordinary dog, yet his owner wasn't an ordinary man. Don't be angry anymore, Rosaria. Brother Aaron treasures that dog a lot. Marianne was frustrated at how the party was turning out. She never managed to win Richard's affection, no matter how hard she tried to befriend the dog in the past. She wondered what had gotten over Richard today. I know, I won't hold it against the dog, 
Azaria forced a smile. You can sit over there. I'll go talk to April. Marianne walked towards her friend. Can we begin? April asked as she approached her. She wanted to get this over and done with as soon as possible. April, go apologize to Rosaria later, Rosaria said. It's for your own good. Mr. Davidson is an important person in the entertainment industry. I didn't push her into the pool, did I? April's face looked ghastly. If you think I should apologize for what I said earlier, I don't think it's necessary. I wasn't lying, Marianne. Shouldn't you try to consider my stand? I'm your guest tonight as well. I'm helping you MC. If you don't want me to, I can leave now. Marianne's facial expression looked a little stiff, but she broke into a smile quickly. All right, it's my fault. You're right. Don't leave, all right? I won't have an MC without you. We're already running ten minutes late. Do help me clarify later when you're on stage. That's no problem. April took the opportunity to go along with her. Marianne spoke to the DJ quickly and the music quieted. April climbed onto the wooden stairs in the middle of the pool with the microphone in her hand. Dear esteemed guests, good evening. Welcome to Marianne's birthday party. We're running late due to some technical difficulties and we're sorry for the delay and inconveniences caused. Aaron was looking at the slim figure in the middle of the pool while sitting on the rattan chair beneath the tree. April looked like a fairy that had descended to earth. Esther laughed. The MC is good. She's very eloquent and there's a soothing quality to her voice. Yes, Aaron said distractedly. His woman was naturally outstanding in every aspect. Sylvia teased. Grandma, so rare for you to praise someone. Why don't you introduce her to my brother? I did intend to do so, but I heard that she's from Lukesville and her parents are no longer. Esther shook her head. Your brother is the future successor of the company. His wife has to be of equal standing. I've seen it all. Having a compatible family background is extremely important for a successful marriage. Aaron frowned. If I fancy someone, I don't care about her family background at all. I won't even care if she's broke. When two persons of different upbringing get together, you will find that your values and viewpoints of the world will be very different after a while. Esther waved her hands dismissively. Forget it, you won't understand. I'm telling you now that I won't be supportive of the relationship. I'm the one who's looking for a wife. I don't need your support. Hugh. Before Esther could continue, an ear-screeching static interference could be heard from the stage. The platform looked like it was on the verge of collapse, and April was wobbling precariously trying to catch her balance. Aaron looked stricken with panic and stood up abruptly. Episode 113. April is my fiancé. Standing on the stage, April felt something was not right, so she held the handrail but stumbled toward the ground. However, she only managed to make two steps before the stage suddenly fell apart and she fell into the water along with it. December in Rosewood City wasn't cold, but the water was. April didn't realize that the water was deeper than it looked until she fell to the bottom of the pool. The middle area was the deepest area of the pool. The water there was at least six feet deep. Thankfully, she knew how to swim. When she tried pretty hard to bring herself up, the planks of the stage fell on her shoulders and head. She heard a buzzing noise at the back of her head, then felt dizziness. After that, she sank back to the bottom along with the planks. Right at that point, she inhaled quite some water and started falling unconscious. Through the water, she saw someone jump into the pool quickly, swimming towards her. She thought it was Aaron, but as the man got closer, she realized that it was Isaac. She didn't understand why he looked so anxious. She guessed that it was because her vision was blurred and she couldn't see clearly. When Isaac swam up to her, she lost her eyesight temporarily. Isaac lifted the planks, held April, and swam back as quickly as possible. Two people had fallen into the water, so the guests had all gathered around the pool and started whispering to each other. At the shore side, Isaac shook April. She didn't wake up, so he hurriedly took off his coat, wrapped her up, and then carried her up. Her wet hair rested on her scalp, and her forehead was bleeding. Soon the blood covered half of her face. Seeing the blood, Isaac was shocked. He had been torturing her, giving her pain, yet he never wanted her to suffer any physical harm. He wanted her to live safely and healthily. April, wake up. Isaac's breath was shallow and uneven. He patted her face, then pressed her chest. She let out a few mouthfuls of water, but still didn't wake up. Under desperation, he prepared to give her artificial respiration. When he forced her mouth open, he was violently dragged away, and a man in a dark green suit took his place. What are you doing? The raging Isaac rushed up and launched a punch. He didn't even care who that man was. Piss off, he roared. Aaron clenched his fists and turned to look at him. His face was perfectly handsome, and his eyes were dark and cold. I'm going to save her, 
he said. Don't touch me again. If Isaac didn't save April, he would want to beat him to death because Isaac touched the chest of his woman. He was so angry about it, even if Isaac did it to save her. And just now, Isaac even tried to give her CPR. Am I dead? I'm here, so she'll never need a strange man's help. Isaac paused slightly when he saw Aaron's face clearly. A strange thought emerged in his head, yet he didn't have the time to calm himself down and think. Mr. Bennett, I don't care. Before he finished, he saw Aaron bent over to give April the artificial respiration. At that moment, he suddenly figured something out. If a man wouldn't allow another man to touch a woman, then he must have his eyes on that woman. But wasn't April in a relationship with Richard Jones? Almost everyone in Rosewood City knew that Aaron and Richard were best friends. Did they even share women? Isaac clenched his fists. He knew that Aaron was giving April artificial respiration, but when their lips touched, he became so angry that his own lips turned purple. The guests found the scene peculiar as well. The Flanders family looked surprised, and Marianne looked grim. Everyone heard about how much of a cleanliness freak Aaron was. He had a reputation of humiliating all the girls he dated with his vile mouth. But here he was, fighting to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth rescue for April. It was unbelievable. Esther looked on meaningfully as well. Her grandson had rushed forward when the platform gave way. Isaac only managed to jump in first as he was right by the poolside. She knew her grandson well. He was highly possessive. She figured that he had something going on with this girl for him to act this way. Ack, ack. April coughed out some water after a couple of rescue attempts. She opened her eyes feebly, but her body was weak. Blood was still dripping down the side of her face, and she couldn't make out the person in front of her. She remembered that Isaac was the last person she saw, and she mouthed, Isaac? Aaron's joyous expression was replaced by a look of coldness. He turned around and glared at Isaac viciously. With a swoop, he lifted April and walked out. Halfway, he paused and looked at the rest of the guests before settling his gaze on Sylvia. You are a police officer. Protect the scene of the crime and find out why this happened in the first place. Yes, Sylvia nearly gave him a salute. Her brother's aura was far more intimidating than her own superior's. Don't worry, I won't let anyone near the scene. Aaron marched on with April in his arms. Isaac belted behind him. Isaac! Rosaria grabbed his wrist and pleaded, No matter what, you're attending this birthday party as my boyfriend. How do you expect me to face the rest of the guests if you walked out on me? Please, you can go over later. Aaron will bring her to the hospital. I'm afraid you've got it wrong. I was never your boyfriend. We were just putting on an act together. Isaac pried her hands away from his wrists and ran after Aaron. At 8.20 p.m., Aaron barged through the accident and emergency doors. Medical personnel hurried April into the resuscitation room. As he looked at the shut doors in front of him, he unbuttoned his shirt anxiously. He turned to see Isaac run into the building hurriedly. The two of them locked eyes about 10 meters apart, and Isaac continued to walk towards him. Aaron could see the worry in his eyes. Mr. Davidson, thank you for saving April today. You can go home now. Isaac's handsome face looked serious on his drive here. He thought about a lot of things, and he reminded himself to stay calm. But it was hard to control his emotions now. Mr. Bennett, you don't have to thank me. It's my duty to save April. Aaron could sense it. He wasn't stupid. He didn't understand why Isaac jumped in even before Ryan Rodriguez. He wondered how many more suitors April had. You know April. April is my fiancé. They looked at each other, and the atmosphere was tense. Episode 114. You don't even qualify to be my love rival. Aaron spent about ten seconds staring at him. Then he suddenly smiled and said, I remember seeing you last year. Your name is Isaac, right? I think your girlfriend is the one who fell into the water earlier. Mr. Bennett, I didn't know about your relationship with April. But she's really my fiancé. We got engaged under the witness of our parents. Isaac calmly looked Aaron in the eyes. His tone revealed how much he cherished that part of his memory. The pale light poured down. Aaron's eyes were as dark as the night sky. He wanted to punch someone so badly that his muscles twitched. However, his education and military experience told him to calm down and to restrain himself. How could he believe Isaac? Maybe this man was a lunatic. Mr. Bennett, how's April? Is she okay? Winnie ran over and asked. Seeing the two men on the verge of breaking out into a fight, her heart missed a beat. What? What happened? Aaron held his breath, grabbed Isaac's collar and said, Try to say another word. How could April have a fiancé? That was ridiculous. How could she ever get engaged to Isaac? 
At that very moment, he was trying very hard to stop himself from disabling this man. Why would I lie to you? I'm telling you the truth. If she wasn't my fiancé, why would I jump into the water to save her? Mr. Bennett, I won't forget how you've saved my fiancé. Please, leave now, Isaac said blandly. Once again, Aaron's body froze. He felt that nothing was more ridiculous than what he had heard. He was April's boyfriend, yet this man just told him to leave. How could he? You're lying! Winnie glared at Isaac and spoke out loud. Mr. Davidson, aren't you ashamed to say that? Just now you had your arm around Rosaria's waist. You were hugging and kissing and you carried her into the villa to change. Everyone at the party saw that. Besides, everyone knows that Rosaria has a boyfriend whose name is Isaac, who owns a film company and who has been helping her. You two hold hands in public and you've admitted to the public that Rosaria is your girlfriend. And now you're claiming that you have a fiancé? How can you even say that? Don't you have any sense of shame? Who are you? You know nothing about April. Isaac's face darkened immediately. Winnie didn't look at him but turned to Aaron and continued, I've been sharing a room with April for nearly a year. I've never seen this man, and except you, Mr. Bennett, I never saw her with another man. If she had a fiancé, she'd at least contact him in some way. Hearing that, Isaac felt a tsunami in his heart. He thought that April was dating Richard, but now he found out that he was wrong. Graham said that Richard often drives Aaron's sports car, so he thought it was Richard in the car. But now he figured out that it was Aaron himself. He had the same guess on his way here, but he didn't want to think about it. He couldn't understand how on earth April could hook up with someone like Aaron. He was clearly aware of the fact that April was pretty and capable, yet he never thought that Aaron would fall for her. As all sorts of thoughts overwhelmed Isaac, but Aaron calmed down quickly. He didn't know that Rosaria was a celebrity, nor did he know about her relationship with Isaac. Hearing what Winnie had said, he gained some insight into their relationships. If I were you, Isaac, I would walk away now. I know your family has great influence in Rosewood City, Mr. Bennett, but you shouldn't abuse your power like this. Isaac smiled slyly. I'm not abusing my power. April will clear things up once she wakes up. Aaron looked at him with contempt. You are the director of a big company after all, Isaac. You shouldn't compromise on your values after gaining some fame and fortune. I heard that you owe all you have now to a woman. Your company used to belong to the Eisenberg family, am I right? His temples throbbed at the mention of the Eisenbergs. All his acquaintances knew that it was taboo to bring it up in front of him. I don't have an impressive background as you do, Mr. Bennett, but I worked hard for everything I have today. Aaron was quiet. He had managed to cool down and gave some thought about what Isaac had just said. Go away. I can't be bothered to talk to someone like you. You don't even qualify to be my love rival. He thought even less of Isaac than that childish celebrity Ryan Rodriguez. At least Ryan had a decent character. He reflected on his raging temper at the beginning of their conversation and chastised himself for losing his cool like that. Aaron quietly turned his back against him and focused on the red light above the resuscitation room. Isaac could sense the contempt in Aaron's words, and he clenched his fists as he stared at the man's back. Mr. Bennett, you should be humbler. You might be thinking that I'm just pulling your leg about the fact that I am her fiancé, but the truth is the truth. Do you really think you know April? I bet you don't even know her real name. You might not even know her as well as your own brother, Richard. Aaron turned to look at him again. Never had he met anyone as loathsome as Isaac. What does Richard know? She really hasn't told you anything, has she? Are you sure she's dating you and not Richard? Isaac laughed sarcastically and backed up to lean against a wall. He remained silent after that. Aaron put up an aloof expression as he clenched his fists. He was full of questions and doubts, but he refused to seek answers from Isaac. Firstly, he didn't wish to hear things about April from this man. He would ask her himself later. Secondly, he found Isaac's eerie aura repulsive. Thirdly, he could tell that Isaac was truly concerned about April, and man to man, he could sense his worry. What was April's relationship to Isaac? What had Richard got to do with them? What were they all hiding from him? The more he thought about these, the angrier he got. It was the first time he felt like an outsider of April's life. Isaac wasn't budging. Aaron walked to the side and made a call to Marvin to arrange for April to be admitted into a VIP ward. One of the nurses brought over a fresh set of hospital gowns for April. Aaron handed the set of clothes to Winnie. Put them on for her. He proceeded towards the door and then he noticed that Isaac was still standing in the same spot. A surge of anger washed over Aaron and he angrily said, Didn't you hear what I just said? She's going to be changing April's clothes. Get out now. Episode 115. 
We're a couple. She pursued me. Isaac fixed his eyes on April and said, Mr. Bennett, I'm not like you. I've seen every part of her body. He spoke in a careless tone, yet his words pierced into Aaron's heart like a needle. Aaron tightened his body and his face turned darker and darker. He couldn't even stand letting another man touch April's hand. Meanwhile, Isaac claimed that he had seen all of April's body. He knew that Isaac was just trying to piss him off, yet he couldn't help that it had worked. How could any other man see his woman's body? Mr. Bennett, why are you looking at me like this? Isn't it normal for a man to do something with his fiance? Isaac lowered his eyes and said, We're a couple. She pursued me. You think that's something to show off? Aaron laughed with anger and responded in a cold voice. I don't know which part of your words is true and which is not. Neither do I know what exactly had happened between you two, but I do know that you were two-timing her and you trampled on a woman's shoulder to climb up to a higher place. However, you're not ashamed at all. On the contrary, you claim that April pursued you. Have you ever thought about giving her some respect? I hesitated a little earlier, but now I am sure that she definitely hates you. I let you stand here not because I respect you, but because you're not qualified to be my rival. Isaac, I know you've started some kind of movie and television base and made yourself famous in the film industry, but don't think I will be afraid of you for that. You're nothing. Isaac looked at Aaron's sudden face and said, I surely know that I'm nothing in your eyes, Mr. Bennett, but I guess your family won't accept the fact that April has been engaged with someone else. He understood that if he stayed here, things might get ugly. He knew that he shouldn't have been Aaron, but he still wanted to say something to disgust him. He believed that it would certainly bother Aaron if he told him that his woman's body had been seen by some other man. Aaron was like a prince, and he was also a clean freak, so how could he possibly pretend to hear nothing about it? I stayed because I'm worried about April. Since she's fine, I'll be leaving. After saying that, Isaac gave a meaningful glance at April, who was still in a deep sleep, then turned and left. He knew that if he stayed longer, he might really get into a fight with Aaron. Winnie hesitated shortly and then said, Mr. Bennett, I think you better calm down right now. Isaac said that on purpose. He was trying to sow discord among you and April. I know that. I didn't take his words seriously. Aaron responded with a cold voice, then closed the door heavily. Winnie was a little speechless. If you didn't take his words seriously, why did you slam the door? He walked a few feet away from the ward, then took out his phone and called Richard. As soon as the call was answered, he asked a question. Where are you? I, uh, I'm in Lukesville. Richard stuttered. What are you doing in Lukesville? Aaron remembered that Lukesville was April's hometown. Was this a coincidence? I have something to, said Richard. About April? He asked. Richard stayed silent. Have you two been hiding something from me? Is she cheating on me with you? Aaron asked angrily, then denied himself right afterward. No, that's not possible. After all, I'm so much better than you, even in bed. There's no reason for anything to happen between you and her. Now tell me, what have you been hiding from me? Richard was a little nervous and guilty at first, but after hearing what Aaron said, he started laughing. Well, that's mean. Don't forget that part of your body that was handicapped for six to seven years. How could you say you're even better than me in bed? Can't even last a second in bed. April affirmed my endurance in bed. You won't understand. Aaron rebutted nonchalantly. What? You've already hit a home run? I thought you only just started dating her. Richard stuttered in surprise. Aaron chuckled. You don't need to hit a home run to know some things. Richard was baffled. Did April use her hands to help you? Or her mouth? My God, I couldn't tell that she was so wild in bed. Aaron was blushing as he continued to grill him. This chap, I told him to lay off those rated R magazines and films. He's so full of dirty thoughts, Aaron thought. But the thought of being intimate with April made his heart race. He knew it wasn't time to be bantering about such things. Quit changing the topic. You haven't answered my question. I bumped into Isaac at Marianne's party today. The fuck? Isaac that bastard? Richard cursed. Isaac made a scene to cause him to misunderstand April. Richard wondered if he caused a scene again. What'd he say? I'm asking the questions here, Aaron said with annoyance. He said that April was his fiance, and he also said that you and April. Hey, hey, hey. April and I are in the clear. We're not up to anything, Richard stated clearly. He didn't expect Aaron to meet Isaac so soon. It seemed to him that the cat was out of the bag. April was Isaac's ex-fiance, so he was telling the truth. Aaron felt a heavy weight resting on his chest as Richard confirmed his doubts. How could his woman be someone else's fiance? He couldn't believe that she courted Isaac in the past. 
He wondered how far they had progressed till they had kissed, went to bed together. No matter how hard he tried to control his emotions, he was feeling angry and indignant as he paced around and kicked the wall with his foot. Across the barrier, Richard could hear his frustrated grunts and scuffle. He comforted him. Calm down, didn't you hear me? I said it was a thing of the past. Another thing you should prepare yourself before you hear this. April's real name is April Eisenberg. Her surname is Eisenberg. April Eisenberg? Aaron felt rage creeping up on him. She even hid her real name from him. Yeah, she's the daughter of Kenneth Eisenberg from the Eisenberg Group. Aaron was shocked. That girl? The daughter of that infamous federal criminal? Don't say that in front of April, please. I think she'll mind it. Richard sighed. She told me that her dad isn't a bad guy. She said that Isaac was the one who framed him. I've heard about the case myself when it was first reported. It was written in great detail in the newspapers and websites. Who knows? I guess nobody wishes to believe that their own father is like that. Aaron was silent. He didn't expect April to be of such a background. The daughter of Kenneth Eisenberg. No wonder she told him previously that her father was in jail and that his family would never approve of her. This was the reason why she held herself back from being with him. So April is that dumb girl I was talking about. The girl who let her fiancé steal her company, Aaron concluded. I think I remember you making some sort of remark like that, Richard replied. He thought about how amusing it is that Aaron had fallen in love with that dumb girl. Why did you wait until now to tell me all of this? How long have you kept this from me? Aaron felt incredulous that his good pal knew more about his girlfriend than he did. Was he really an outsider? Episode 116. Aaron was boiling with anger. The more Aaron thought about it, the more he wanted to throw Richard to Africa. That, that's, a, that's a long story, actually. I found out about it just recently, Richard said with embarrassment. Earlier, Graham invited me to a poker party. I remember that I told you about it. Isaac was at the party, too, and I was going to ask him some questions about the film company. But when I got there, I found that April was there, too. Have they been keeping in touch? Aaron interrupted him. Did April really cheat on him? Richard rolled his eyes and continued, Can you let me finish? I don't know exactly what happened. Isaac somehow thought that I was with April, so in front of all these people, he humiliated her. He said that April seduced him and that she isn't a decent woman. I was pretty angry at that time because I thought that she fooled you. Later, April found me and explained it all to me. Turned out that Isaac had been giving her a hard time after taking the Eisenberg group away from her. He forbade the whole film and television circle to hire April as a voice actor. She was desperate, and that's why she changed her name and left Lukesville. But earlier, Isaac found her in Rosewood City. He threatened to stop an online series that used April's voice from airing. April couldn't bear to let this happen, so she went to beg Isaac. The man said that he'd consider letting the online series air if she agreed to work for Rosaria. Aaron was stunned. How can men like this even exist? He couldn't believe what he had heard. Isaac took away her family business, leaving her hopeless. Just now, he told me, her boyfriend, that he's her fiancé, as if they hadn't forgotten each other. Who allowed him to do that? He did that? Richard was pretty speechless as well. April told me that Isaac hates her family. I guess he was trying to get between you and her. He's such a freak. I pulled some strings with that online series. It has passed the censorship. I asked some friends from the film industry, and they told me that Isaac didn't only ban April Eisenberg. He recently released a new message and banned a girl named April. No wonder I've never seen her take any voice acting job. Isaac has really gone too far. Aaron was boiling with anger. He couldn't believe that his woman had actually been abused like that. April is so silly. She should have told me about that earlier. How could I let anyone bully my woman like that? I guess she didn't want you to know that she's Kenneth Eisenberg's daughter. After all, she isn't proud of what her father did, said Richard. I came to Lukesville mostly to find out April's past. I was going to tell you after I got some results. What did you find? I went to her old school. She was really forced to leave. I heard from her schoolmate that she had excellent grades and that she started voice acting when she was little. She went to Japan as an exchange student. Added with the fact that she was pretty and capable, she was envied by quite some people. After her father went to prison, nearly the whole school knew about it. At first, the other students simply laughed at her and insulted her with language. Later on, she started getting attacked by the other girls in bathrooms. She was often locked in classrooms during winter nights, and some boys would bar her on the road and try touching her. The staff at the canteen wouldn't sell her food. Some professors wouldn't even allow her in their classrooms. Some people spread her photos online so she couldn't find a job. I think that's why she changed her name and came to Rosewood City. I guess she didn't tell others about her past because she didn't want to experience all that again. 
Aaron was shocked. He always saw April as a strong and independent woman. He couldn't imagine her shedding a single tear. She was different from those weak women he met in the past. He also couldn't imagine a girl being humiliated like that. He couldn't imagine April being beaten up in the toilet. He couldn't imagine her being trapped in a classroom shuddering from the cold. He couldn't imagine her being bullied by other boys. He was angry, and he felt a stinging pain in his heart. He felt sorry. Sorry that she had to go through all these hardships. She didn't tell him any of these painful memories. She buried the pain and wore her scars beneath that beautiful exterior. He thought about how many times she had to hide her sorrow with a light smile. How could this woman be bullied? If only he knew her earlier. Also, Rosaria was her best friend who ended up betraying her with Isaac. I heard that she used to do voice acting too. April used to recommend her to production teams when she was doing well herself, but Rosaria backstabbed her by cheating with Isaac. Richard continued, Isaac, that scum should be scraped from her life sooner. Aaron replied coldly, Rosaria, good. He would remember that name. Yeah, no matter what kind of man April's father was, she didn't do anything wrong. It's quite unfair that she had to suffer like this, Richard said regretfully. I'll remember that man, Isaac. Oh yeah, how was April humiliated at the poker game? Aaron said before pausing. Uh, well, speak, Aaron sounded harsh. Well, Max Urban splashed a glass of wine onto her because he thought that April was playing around with my feelings. That's why... He I haven't seen Max Urban in a while. Let's all hang out someday, Aaron said curtly before he hung up. Max, he'll remember that name too. He'll remember all of them. Back in the ward, Winnie had already changed April into a fresh set of clothes and she was on the phone with someone. I just don't get it. Why would the platform suddenly collapse? Mid-sentence, she noticed Aaron walking into the room and quickly hung up. Who was it? Marianne? Aaron didn't say anything more. He walked up to the bed and looked at April, who was sound asleep. Her face was as white as a sheet. Her lips were pale and her face slightly gaunt. He didn't remember her to be so skinny. Was it because of Isaac? When he looked at him and got reminded of those typical scenes in television drama, he should be sitting by her bed and holding her hand in his by now. She excused herself and left him to be alone with April. She slowly backed away and tiptoed to the door before Aaron turned to look at her. How's April's relationship with Marianne? Winnie was stunned. Just tell it as it is. Marianne is just a distant relative, Aaron said coolly. Looking at his cold attitude towards the Flanders family, Winnie suddenly felt bad for Marianne. Marianne was flaunting her rich relatives when she mattered so little to them. Average, I guess. We're amicable roommates, friends, but April and I never considered her as a good friend. Why? She's, she's from a different world from us. How should I put it? She's always looking down at us from her ivory tower. Episode 117. I hate April Eisenberg. Winnie paused slightly, then observed Aaron's expression. After confirming that he wasn't angry, she continued. She wouldn't allow her friends to be better than her. It's not like she's mean. We've been roommates for quite a long time, but she's generous to all of us. She always buys us food. I just, I don't think she's the kind of person you can be good friends with unless you're willing to follow her words and do whatever she wants all your life. Are you saying that she's narrow-minded and envious and likes to show off? Aaron said frankly. Well, Winnie choked on her own words. All right, no wonder this man can run a giant company. He grasped all the points and summed it up accurately. Okay, I get it, it's late. You should get back. Tomorrow, when you come here, please bring a few clothes for April. Aaron signaled for her to leave. Winnie was still a little worried. About Isaac, she said. I think you should talk first and don't fight. He's... I won't fight him, Aaron interrupted her. Hearing him, Winnie nodded, walked out, and closed the door from the outside. After that, Aaron sat in the chair beside the bed, held April's hand with one hand, and called Sylvia with the other. What did you find? he asked. My colleagues are here. Just now they went down to the pool to check underwater. Nothing wrong was discovered for now, said Sylvia. How's real? Concussion. She'll do a CT scan tonight. Aaron wanted to kill Marianne. Have you questioned the staff who built the stage yet? Brother, do you really believe that someone tried to hurt Rill? Sylvia lowered her voice and said, I don't think that's possible. I've asked the staff who managed the stage about it, and they told me that the people who set up the stage today were late, so the time was too limited. 
Maybe they forgot to tighten one or two screws. Would the Flanders family ever hire such an unprofessional team to build the stage? Aaron sneered. Besides, if it's just a couple of screws, would the stage fall apart so quickly? Sylvia honestly didn't want to suspect her relatives, so she said, Brother, you mean... Maybe Marianne is jealous of Rill, so she tried to hurt her, Aaron said straightforwardly. Are you joking? Marianne and Rill are friends. Besides, she was supposed to go up to the stage after Rill. If she did that, she might have fallen into the water herself. She's envious. She's envious of April for being prettier and having a better voice than her. Even April's hair is more beautiful than hers. Aaron made it sound very reasonable. Sylvia was a little speechless. There's a lot of girls in the world who are prettier than Marianne, so how many people will she try to hurt then? Stop guessing around. You're not a cop. This was an accident. The Flanders family has admitted that this was their mistake and they'll give real compensation. Accident? Aaron sneered again. My woman fell into the water like that and got hurt. I'll be unhappy about it even if the Flanders family gave her all they had. What do you want then? Aunt Flanders is our grandma's niece after all said Sylvia helplessly. I'm telling you, when you pushed Isaac away to give real artificial respiration, and when you carried her away in haste, our grandma was watching. She's been asking me about it after you left. I can tell she doesn't want you two to be together. Does it have anything to do with me? April is my girlfriend, not hers, Aaron responded blandly. You go capture the man who's responsible for building the stage. If his boss comes over, you can tell them that I'm going to sue their company, and I want a compensation of five million for my girlfriend. Aren't you charging a little too high? Sylvia was trying to persuade her brother. As a police officer, she was always the most afraid of victims with family members that sued for large sums of money. Her brother was that kind of family member. They should have known that she was my girlfriend. Do you know how rich your brother is? As my girlfriend, April is worth at least ten million dollars. Her forehead is injured from the accident. What if it leaves a scar in the future? I'm already being merciful by asking for five million dollars. Aaron hung up after that. After sighing, he turned behind and looked April straight in the eye. She had woken up while he was on the phone. So I'm going to be a millionaire from this accident? April gave him a weak smile. Aaron couldn't bring himself to smile at her. He slammed his phone onto the bedside table and looked at her sternly. Yes, April Eisenberg, you are going to be a millionaire. You traded all of this with your own life. Her smile on her pale face froze, and she instinctively clutched the white sheets in her fists. After a minute, she said hoarsely, You know everything now? How did he find out? She willed herself to recall the series of events. She remembered seeing Isaac while she was in the pool. When she was pulled out of the water, she vaguely remembered seeing Isaac again, then Aaron. But her memory was fuzzy. Did Isaac tell you that I'm April Eisenberg? She hazarded a guess. He told me some bits. He said that you were his fiancée. Were you really? Aaron stared at her. Rubbish. April was shaking and she was slightly flushed from rage. I used to be, but I'm not related to him in any way now. Aaron felt a wave of relief, although he felt protective over her. He was still angry at the fact that she hid these things from him. I heard about the rest from Richard. I kind of know what you went through, April. I know you kept your past from me out of your concern about our relationship. But don't you think it's too much that you shared more about yourself with my good pal than me? Am I such a superficial person in your opinion that I would leave you in view of your history? I know you won't, but I... April gave a helpless smile. How can I bring myself to tell you? Tell you that I'm Kenneth Eisenberg's daughter? Tell you that my father is a lowly criminal? I remember I told you before that you are not to find what your parents did. But I can't speak of my father that way. In my eyes, he's a good person. I lost my mother when I was young, and my father was there for me all along. He taught me my values. He took meticulous care of me. I don't even have the cheek to admit that I am April Eisenberg. Aaron was stunned. April was clutching her jaw. She could feel herself choking up. No matter how much time had passed, it always made her heart ache to talk about her past again. If I hadn't fallen in love with Isaac and brought him to see my dad... If I didn't insist on my engagement with him, my dad wouldn't have landed in jail. You might not believe me, but my father was fiercely protective of his students. He told me that he always felt a sense of pride when he watched his students graduate with flying colors. That was the kind of man he was. But Isaac testified against him in court and accused him of indecency acts against his students. I was in so much pain. I was the one who put him in such a position. I hate myself. Why was I so blind? 
I don't want to be April Eisenberg. I hate April Eisenberg. Episode 118. Are you still mad at me? She could no longer stop her tears from gushing out of her eyes. Ever since her father went to prison, no one had really cared for her. She had been quietly suffering all the pain alone. And now the painful feeling that she had been trying to keep inside herself finally exploded. Aaron was going to be angry, but seeing her cry, his feelings turned complicated. He frowned and handed her a tissue. She covered her eyes with it, and soon it was soaked in tears. After my father went to prison, she continued, the company's share price fell drastically. I got into the company, but I had lived under my father's protection since I was little. I focused on my voice acting and knew nothing about the company. Once I got in, the other shareholders turned against me. They asked me to leave. They said that my dad was bringing the company down. I asked my dad's friends for help. They pretended to help me, but in fact, they'd all taken Isaac's money. They lied to me, and I gave them all my shares. I was so stupid. I had nothing left. No house, no car. I gave Isaac what he wanted. I gave him all my family had. I hate April Eisenberg. I've even wanted to kill myself. All right, stop talking. I get it. Aaron couldn't bear listening to her anymore. Richard had told him that she had suffered some harm, yet he didn't know what she was thinking back then. Now he had figured it out. She guilted herself. He sat on the bed, reached out a hand, and gently pulled her into his arms. April buried her face in his chest, cried and shivered. Soon he felt that his shirt was wetted. He caressed her hair, his eyes unmoving. He told himself that he would make Isaac pay for what he had done to her. Isaac looked like a decent man, yet in fact he had shamelessly hurt a woman. What made Aaron feel more intolerable was that Isaac even claimed to be April's fiancé before his face. I was too nice, thought Aaron. I should have punched him in the face. You do have weird taste, as April slowly calmed down in his arms. He said sullenly, You liked him and now you like me. I feel like I'm being lowered by him. It's like I'm a freak too. Mr. Bennett... You're really a freak, thought April. April was already sad. Hearing Aaron's words, she wanted to cry again. Yeah, why do I always like freaks? No, Isaac is a bad man, April corrected Aaron while sobbing. Then silently she added, You're a freak. Aaron sighed, said, Fortunately I knew that you are poor in taste since long ago. I saved you from your poor taste. If it wasn't for me, you might be hurt again by some other bad guy in the future. Yeah, yeah, you saved me. April had never met someone else who would try to comfort others like that. She smiled through tears, looked at him with her red eyes, and asked, Are you still mad at me? Her words reminded him of something. So his handsome face turned dark again as he said, I am. You called Isaac's name when you were dragged out of the water. Do you still like him? And he let go of her, then stood up and circled in the ward with an extremely sour face. Did I? April gave a start. After thinking back carefully, she said, I think I saw Isaac's face through the water. I thought he saved me, so... You're right. He did save you. Aaron was now angry at himself. Why did he sit so far away from her back then? If he was closer to her, he would be able to save her and she would call his name. April looked dazed before laughing helplessly. I didn't expect him to save me. He probably just wants to torture me more. Come on, don't be mad at me anymore. I, I really don't fancy him at all. She reached out for his arm and flung it back. She could tell that Aaron wasn't convinced, and she began to worry. Have you, have you stopped liking me? After you found out that I'm Kenneth Eisenberg's daughter? Haven't I already told you? I don't care about this. Aaron looked at her and said coldly, Am I such a superficial guy? I care more about... He wanted to know which stage she progressed to with Isaac. He cared about whether she went to bed with him, whether he saw her body. He wanted to slaughter him just thinking about it. He kept his virginity till now, but young girls nowadays. She was engaged to Isaac at a young age of 22. She didn't even know him since they were children, like in Sylvia's case. He didn't blame her, though. He knew it wasn't her fault that she met such a scumbag. Then what do you care about? April looked at him and said. She found it unsettling that he was beating around the bush. He was always straightforward with his words. Did Isaac say other things? No. Aaron plopped himself into the chair willfully. Oh yes, don't speak to me. We're still fighting. April was laughing hysterically. She reached out to hold his hand and said coyly, I am a patient. I nearly lost my life back there in the pool. I'm still feeling very giddy. 
I haven't even had dinner. I'm famished. Aaron pulled back from her grasp and pulled out his phone without even looking at April in her eye. He dialed Marvin's number. Come over quickly. Buy the patient here a meal from the cupola. It'll be a good nutrition for her. He hung up and continued to ignore her. April couldn't help but smile. He was obviously angry with her, but he still cared enough to buy the best food for her. Although she had never been to the cupola, she had heard about their food and their pricey menu. She looked over affectionately at the man who still had his lips pursed and felt a gush of warmth wash over her heart. She felt comforted and at peace, relieved as well. Lucky he didn't leave her after finding out the truth. Lucky he wasn't angry with her for hiding the truth from him. Lucky he still wanted to seek revenge on her behalf. Why hadn't she met him sooner? Why was she so misled and blinded to love someone like Isaac? If she could turn back time, she would have had a decent family background, a father she was proud of. She could have been worthy of him. His grandma was there tonight. April wondered if his grandmother had picked up anything. They probably wouldn't approve of her. She was overwhelmed with doubt and anxiety suddenly and felt the room spinning around her. She slowly let her eyelids fall and she felt her limbs go weak. She felt a warm hand being placed on her forehead. She smiled and opened her eyes, looking straight into his black pupils. I don't have a fever. April held on to his hands. Aaron grunted resentfully and said, Don't touch me, I'm still angry. With that, he took his seat on the chair again and crossed his arms. April was speechless. She never met anyone who announced that they were throwing a fit. But why did she find him so adorable? She was starting to like him more and more. She let her eyes close again and fell into a deep slumber. When she woke up again, Marvin was there and Aaron was unpacking the food and arranging them on the bedside table. Episode 119. You're not mad. Ms. April, you're awake. Marvin noticed at first. The food is ready. All right. April supported her body with her arms and sat up with a lot of effort. The meal was exaggeratedly rich. Even the rice was covered in beef shreds. Ms. April, if you don't want rice, I can recommend you this millet soup with sea cucumber. It's not bad. You can also have some bird's nest soup. Marvin introduced the food. You don't have to order me such a rich meal. I can just have some normal food. April looked at Aaron and said, I assume you haven't had dinner either. Let's eat together. Aaron turned to Marvin and said to him, You tell her that I had dinner before she woke up. Both April and Marvin were speechless. Without any other choice, April started eating alone. A while later, Aaron said to Marvin, You tell her, don't just eat the kongi. Try the fishball soup, too. The corners of Marvin's mouth twitched slightly. Mr. Bennett, Miss April is sitting right beside you. Can't you speak to her yourself? Marvin didn't understand why he was even there. Aaron and April weren't acting like a couple at all. We're fighting, Aaron said blandly. April nearly spat out some soup. Who's fighting you? You're just sulking. Mr. Bennett, Ms. April is injured. You should be nice to her. Why are you fighting a patient? Marvin tried to convince him. He felt like he was getting driven crazy by his boss again. You're not mad. You just don't want to admit that you want to hear some nice words. It's written on your face. I am nice, so I'm sitting here, Aaron said expressionlessly. He believed that no one understood how unhappy he was right now. Marvin didn't know how to respond. Before he considered his boss a wise man, but now he found that Mr. Bennett was becoming more and more childish ever since he got in a relationship. Mr. Marvin, thank you for delivering the meal. You can leave if you want. April smiled and said, All right, I'll be going then. Boss, call me if you need anything. Marvin felt that he should leave as soon as possible so his boss and his boss's girlfriend could figure out a way to make peace. After Marvin left, April finished the meal and then looked at Aaron pitifully and said, I'm thirsty. Aaron silently poured her a glass of water and put it on the table. My hands are powerless, so I need you to help me. April blinked her eyes. If your hands are powerless, how did you feed yourself just now? Asked Aaron. You majored in broadcasting, but you can act too. Your head is hurt, not your hands. April clenched her teeth, feeling that he wasn't gentle. I used up all my strength just now. I'm still dizzy, she said. She pretended to suffer from dizziness. Seeing that, Aaron hurriedly held her. He sat on the bed, picked up the glass, and prepared to give her some water. But suddenly April brought herself into his arms and put her arms around his waist. Please, don't be angry, she said with a sweet and soft voice. I know you care about me. You were making me feel insecure just now. You made me worry if you were still mad because I lied to you. 
She rarely took such initiative. Looking at her delicate face, Aaron's heart raced a little. He lowered his head with a complicated feeling, and then her cold lips landed on his. His heart missed a beat. He looked at her, and his pupils shrank. She also widened her eyes to look at him. Her eyelashes were shaking slightly like feathers. No reaction? Confusedly and boldly, she explored his mouth with her tongue and put her arms around his neck. She was wearing a loose hospital gown, and when she raised her arms, the collar slipped off just slightly, such that her shoulders were exposed. His neck was in direct contact with her. The two of them were intertwined scandalously, and it was hard to describe it with words. The more Aaron tried to steady himself, the more he couldn't control the blood gushing up his face, and his cheeks were bright pink. What a little vixen. He knew that she was only acting like a prude, and she was finally showing her true colors to him. He knew she was coy, too. He loved how coquettish she was. Aaron couldn't hold himself back any longer and put down the cup on the table. His arms encircled her waist with his strong arms and kissed her back with a feverish passion. Isaac must have kissed her like this in the past. I must make her remember my kisses. Only mine, Aaron thought to himself. April was originally in control and kept a good pace. Now she felt as if she was swept into a whirlwind and he was taking over the wheel. As he held her in his arms and kissed her fervently and lustfully, she felt her dizziness recur. This time it was even worse than before. She had difficulty breathing and felt suffocated. Suddenly her mind went blank and she collapsed limply into him. Aaron was shocked and hugged her tightly. Her complexion was sickly pale and her eyes were shut. April? Apricot? He called out her name anxiously. When she was unresponsive, he quickly laid her down on the bed and pressed the call button by the bedside. He impatiently stormed out of the room before any healthcare professional could respond. The moment he stepped out of the room, he saw a male doctor hurrying towards him. Your efficiency is too low. Why did you wait so long before coming to see the patient? Aaron was panic-stricken and said harshly, It's only been about ten seconds since you pressed the call button. I hurried over immediately when I saw the alert, the doctor said indignantly. He didn't dare to argue any further as he had heard about Aaron's social status. Cut the bullshit! She passed out suddenly! Aaron pulled the doctor by his arm and led towards the ward. Well, that's unusual. What was the patient doing before she passed out? The doctor asked seriously. She was... We were kissing! The doctor stumbled and almost tripped on his own feet. How was the kiss so intense that she just fainted? When he entered the room, the doctor pulled out his stethoscope and April opened her eyes weakly. Apricot! You're awake? Aaron rushed forward to hold her hand and breathed a sigh of relief. You gave me such a scare right now. April recalled what had just happened and her pretty face was colored red instantly. She had actually passed out from a kiss? She had never felt more embarrassed than that moment and wanted to cover herself with her sheets. It was all his fault. Why did he have to kiss her so hard? She couldn't even catch her breath in between. She shouldn't have pacified him. Hopefully the doctor didn't know what happened. The doctor awkwardly did an electrocardiogram for her and cleared his throat. Mr. Bennett, your girlfriend suffered from a high-impact head injury and resulting in secondary brain concussion. She should be given proper rest and should not be partaking in any vigorous activities. Even kissing could cause further injury to her brain. That's why she fainted momentarily. April pulled up her sheet slowly and covered half of her face. She wished so badly to be discharged right away and never see this doctor again. Really, it was humiliating. Will she become the joke of the town amongst the doctors here? I understand. Aaron nodded his head and asked again, Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Episode 120 You were the only one who slept in my bed in the first place. The doctor didn't know what to say. How could that be his fault? He'd been a doctor for tens of years, but what happened just now was new to him. However, facing the rich and powerful Aaron, the doctor had no choice but to apologize. My apologies, Mr. Bennett. I didn't explain well enough. Well, you can leave now. I'll call you if we need you, Aaron responded blandly while pointing his chin at the door. After the doctor left, April picked up the pillow to hit Aaron angrily and shyly. Aaron abruptly turned back, frowned, and started complaining. You know you had a concussion, but you still risked your health to seduce me. Now what, you blacked out? You're not allowed to do that again. April blushed with anger. She put down the pillow because hitting him with a pillow wasn't enough to channel her anger. She wanted to hit him with a brick. How could he blame her when he was to be blamed and make his words sound so reasonable? Would I have blacked out if you didn't kiss me so violently? You wouldn't even give me a chance to breathe, she said. How could that be violent? You lured me into this deep kiss. Aaron glanced at her gently and helplessly and then said, 
You had a fiancé, but your kissing skills are so lame. It seems that Isaac really is incapable. You've never French kissed with him, have you? Or why don't you know how to breathe in a kiss? I'm done talking. Don't talk to me or I'll never kiss you again. April was so angry that she turned away and refused to continue the conversation. If she kept talking with him, she would definitely black out again because of anger. I'm just saying, how can you get mad so easily? You're not a child, Aaron said while cleaning the table for her. Never mind, I'm older than you, so I'll tolerate you. April was speechless. Tolerate what? I don't want your tolerance. She closed her eyes, hearing Aaron pacing in the ward. When the footsteps finally stopped, she heard some other noises from the bedside. April pretended to be asleep for five minutes, then turned to find that Aaron was peeling a kiwi with his hands, head lowered. He peeled so unskillfully that quite some pulp was peeled off. When he was finished peeling, the small kiwi had become fragmentary. He stared at it for a short while and then abruptly lowered his head and ate it. April was speechless. After finishing the kiwi, Aaron took another one and started peeling it. I'm a patient. Shouldn't you peel one for me? April felt lucky that she didn't have a heart disease because if she did, she would have died a hundred times because of how angry Aaron made her. I wanted to give you a pretty one. The ones I peeled earlier were all too ugly and there was not much pulp left. Aaron knitted his beautiful eyebrows together and said, Marvin is really not good at selecting fruits. These kiwis are too small and too soft. It's because you don't know how to peel them. Why are you blaming Marvin? Sighing silently, April said, In that case, I don't think I'll be able to eat any kiwi, even after you've peeled the whole bag full of them. Since you don't mind, I'll give you this peeled one. Aaron nodded and handed her the peeled kiwi. April looked at the awfully peeled kiwi and then silently ate it. I'll call the nurse to wheel you to get a CT scan. It's about time. Aaron stood up and called the nurse. At 11 o'clock at night, April washed herself and lay back in bed. Soon her whole body started to feel hot. It made her so uncomfortable that she couldn't even lift her eyelids. April opened her eyelids groggily as she felt the sharp prick of the cannula. Only then did she notice Aaron sitting by the bed. You're running a fever. They're giving you some fluids now. Catch some sleep. I'll keep an eye on you. He cupped her icy hands in his own, his eyes exuding warmth and love for her. April's heavy eyelids fell shut. In her confusion, she vaguely recalled how Isaac took everything from the Eisenberg family, leaving her with nothing and her health in shambles. She once ran a persistent fever for days, even fainting without anyone by her side, forcing her to drag herself to the emergency department for a drip. She was on drips for five hours straight without anyone delivering food to her. She had had to even suffer silently with her gastritis. Thinking about what happened then, she found it fascinating that she managed to pull through those difficult times. Now, she had him by her side. She was reassured. She mustered up all her strength to give his hands a little squeeze. A single tear rolled down the side of her cheek. Aaron watched the tear wet the pillow she was lying on and gently wiped it away. However, he found it hard to control his jealousy and anger when he thought about April's history with Isaac. He knew how much hardship she had been through and he couldn't bear to make things any more difficult. All he wanted to do now was to protect her and never let anyone else hurt her again. Sunday morning, the morning glow of the sun flooded the windows of Rosewood City. The curtains in the hospital ward danced with the light breeze. April felt as if a giant heat pack had been placed beside her, continuously radiating warmth, leaving her feeling toasty and cozy. She turned over to wrap her arms around the giant heat pack, only that it did not feel like a giant heat pack and there seemed to be something pressing against her abdomen. Her eyes snapped open. A ludicrously handsome face appeared in front of her. Aaron was in deep slumber, a growing ring of dark circles starting to form under his eyes. His luscious eyebrows and soft lips reminded her of a young boy's. She was not in the mood for adoration, however. This was the first time she had shared a bed with and slept in the arms of a grown man, especially with his groin pressed up against her. Her mind was buzzing. She blinked her eyes rapidly and pushed Aaron aside with a loud yelp. Aaron startled awake as he fell from the edge of the bed onto the floor with a loud thud. April was still in a daze. After a couple of seconds, Aaron pulled himself to his feet angrily and said between gritted teeth, April! She looked at his crotch dizzily. Aaron followed her gaze. His lips curled into a smile. Has it been too long since the last time? Must be familiar to you. Familiar my ass, April cursed, flustered and embarrassed. Even though she had seen his erection before when she used to bathe him, she was not his girlfriend then and she had not thought more of it. Now, however, things were different. Just at the sight of his bulge, she only wanted to dig herself a hole and hide. Yet Aaron seemed to show not a single hint of embarrassment. I don't like vulgar women. Aaron retorted. April took a few deep breaths and said between gritted teeth, 
You were the one who slept in my bed in the first place. Were you trying to take advantage of me while I was ill? I was planning to sleep on the sofa, but it's not long enough for me. I'd wake up with a sore back, Aaron said nonchalantly.